Good evening, friends, fiends, and night owl supremes. Welcome to A Bit Late, where tonight I have quite a tale for you. It is on the shorter side, but it is illuminating. It's called The King's Candles, and it honors the mullion weed so well, and you'll see why and how. But before we get into it, how are you doing? How was your evening? How was your day? How is your day? Hopefully it's good, and hopefully a story makes it even better. So, do gather about you your blankets and pillows to make your fort or ensconce yourself in them, summon your familiars, put a pot of tea on the boil, or spiced cider or hot chocolate, just the season after all, light your candles and turn on your fairy lights as we get into the enchanting story of The King's Candles. Once upon a time, there lived a good king who was driven from his throne by an enemy. A few faithful knights and servants fled with his majesty to a forest where they found shelter in deep, rocky caves. The flight from the king's palace had been so hasty that the knights and servants could bring only a few things for their king's comfort. It was in the early autumn, and his majesty feared it would be necessary to live in secret during the coming winter. Oh no. You may be sure the king was well pleased to find his knights had brought a few warm blankets and robes. Oh good, he can get comfy and cozy too, and so can they. After he had praised his followers for their thoughtfulness in providing for the winter, a young page stepped forward and said, Your majesty, I did not bring clothing, but I brought as many candles as I could carry. Candles? laughed the king. Now pray tell me, lad, why you brought candles? I mean... Oh, I can think of a lot of reasons, King. You served me well in the palace by seeing that my throne was properly lighted. <laughs> but in our forest exile, we shall have little use for candles, I fear. Sire, replied the page, I thought that your majesty would wish to hold council in the evenings, and that I could light your throne seat with candles as was the custom in the palace. I fear my throne seat, as you call it, will be nothing more than a rocky ledge for some time, said the king. See, there is one in the inner cave which will serve. So long as the candles last, my faithful lad, your king will not be obliged to hold counsel in darkness. Well, see, there you go, they're useful. So long as the candles last, repeated the king's page to himself. I hope our king's soldiers who are seeking help will be able to drive the usurper away before winter comes. The king and his followers soon adapted themselves to life in exile. During the daytime, they hunted game which lurked in the thickets. In the evening, they gathered together in the deep cave and held council. See, they're gonna need these candles even in the daytime if they're in the cave. Then it was that the king sat on his rude throne lit by two candles. <laughs> the king's page with a sinking heart saw the candles grow fewer and fewer until there were but two left. Then at last came an evening when the lights were missing from the king's throne. In a dark corner of the cave, the little page sat grieving because he could not see his king's face. Oh, buddy, that's why you're sad? Can't see his face? Or is there something else about your task? Anyway, it happened one morning that the lad wandered to the edge of the woodland where the highway separated the richly colored forest trees from a stretch of meadowland where the white mist was slowly lifting. On the roadside was an old woman carrying a large sack on her bent shoulders. When she came to the place where the king's page was standing, she set her sack on the ground and looked wistfully at the meadow, then at the deep ditch which separated the field from the highway. Shall I help you cross the ditch? asked the king's page. Oh, so nice. Thank you, my lad, said the old woman. Perhaps I'd better not go across. It would be hard for me to reach the highway again, but I should like a few of those tall million spikes. I have none in my bag so fine as those growing in the meadow. I'll gather some for you, said the king's page. He leaped across the ditch and soon filled his hands with the tall million spikes. The old woman was delighted. She tucked them into her bag and said, They make such fine winter candles. Thank you, my lad. Winter candles, exclaimed the king's page. <gasps> Gasp. I nodded the old woman. Dip them in tallow, a thin coat will do, and you will have candles fit for a king. My, how appropriate. Thank you kindly. 
We are in sore need of candles where I live, but the page stopped. Hughes, Molly, and Spikes. They make candles fit for a king, I say. She knows. And the old woman picked up her sack. But we have no tallow, said the lad. I can spare you a lump of tallow, my boy. Come along with me to my cottage, said the old woman. Oh no. So the king's page carried a sack of molly and spikes to the old woman's cottage, and she gave him a large lump of tallow. On his way back, he leaped across the ditch again and filled his arms with tall molly and spikes. He hurried back to the cave, melted the tallow, and dipped the weeds into the liquid fat. When the king and his party returned that evening to the cave, two tall candles were standing on the rude throne. See, cried the king's page, we have a fresh supply of candles. Tell us where you got them, said the surprised king. Could he not see that they're handmade? They are made from spikes of the mullion weed, explained the king's page. Then he told his majesty about the afternoon's adventure. The mullion weed shall have a new name, declared the king. It shall be called the king's candles. <laughs> oh my. A few days later, the king called his followers around his throne seat and said, A message has come to me declaring that the usurper has been driven out of my country. Tomorrow we'll hold a feast in the palace, and the table shall be lighted by king's candles. Every year since that far-off time when the reigning king holds an autumn festival, the banquet table is lighted with mully and spikes dipped in tallow and they are called the King's Candles. The Mullion's yellow candles burn over the heads of dry sweet fern. The end of the legend of the King's Candles or the legend of the noble Mullion weed. I think that's so cool and I would like to try some of that myself. Thank you friends and fiends for joining me for this short but sweet and delight. <laughs> Get it full tale, the King's Candles. I hope it has made your evening a little bit better or kept you company through whatever you're doing or it made your day brighter because candles. Anyway, do stay tuned for more videos, but now off to sleep and dream what you will or stay a while and enjoy another tale. Whichever you choose, I'll speak to you again and until then, sweet dreams my friends, good night.